This is part of my series of recordings for makeup lectures on organic chemistry. This is supposedly just for fun. I intended it for fun like last year. And now I'm really ha gonna have to record this because there is currently a increase in the number of cases of the COVID-19 and classes are suspended for almost a week and where I teach and uh, I'm gonna have to record this and upload this by mandate which is good because I now get a chance to actually finish this so here we start off with reactions so I have already recordings before of uh, other additional topics basic topics regarding properties of organic compounds isomers uh, resonance strains stabilities intermolecular forces, naming of course, and uh, the requirement is before you start here, you must already have a good idea of those mentioned topics as we go along. If not, then it is highly recommended you go back to the so-called basics. Now, when we talk about reactions in organic chemistry, we are actually pretty much similar to organic, I mean to general chemistry at first. Like before, you have, let's say, combination or synthesis reactions. You have two reactants, they combine, you have one product, so on and so forth. All we need to do in organic chemistry is to just change a little bit their names. Like, for example, we know the format A plus B yields AB. That used to be our synthesis reaction. Here, we just call it an addition reaction because you literally add A and B together. Before, when we have the reverse of addition, so it's like if I have originally AB, then it becomes A plus B. In general chemistry, we call this decomposition. But instead, we call this in organic chemistry as elimination. And uh, if ever we have a reaction that highly resembles double displacement reactions, wherein I have two substances and they switch parts of their uh, composition, that used to be called double displacement. In organic chemistry, we just call them substitution. And the meaning of addition, elimination, and substitution would make more sense as we go along. Now, we don't just you know, identify our reactions based on patterns like addition, two adds to one, elimination, one breaks down to two or more, or substitution, there's just the switching of places. We also have to deal with the reagents that we add in the case of addition and substitution. Like for example, we can try to imagine that our organic compound is A and what I'm going to add is B. So we, we can call this the reagent. And we need to know what's the nature of my reagent. Normally we deal with charges or we need to we think about the charge of the reagent. Like, is this B positive, or is this B negative, or is this B something else? The same in substitution. If, let's say, my organic compound is AB, this is the alkane, or the alcohol, or the ketone, whatever, and CD is the reagent that we add, we must know which part of CD is going to react first. Okay? And in order to know those reagents, we first deal with the two types of bond breakages or cleavages. Homolytic cleavage and heterolytic cleavage will give us our reagents. So, for example, let's say I have my reagent XY, meaning I have X attached to Y, and then there's a supposed homolytic cleavage. When we say homolytic cleavage, homo means the same. So, meaning you can imagine that here we have X and Y being split equally, meaning one electron goes to X and one electron goes to Y. In that case, my X will have one electron with it. It's solo. It doesn't have any pair with it. And then Y also has the same scenario. It only has one single unpaired electron. And we actually call these molecules as free radicals. So if I have, again, an atom or a compound with a single unpaired electron, we call it a free radical. Usually, homolytic cleavage is catalyzed by sunlight. So we usually write that as HP. Heterolytic cleavage means the way that we break the bond is not equal. 
Like for example, we can assume that the two electrons of this may be given to x. It can be given to y, but let's just say that what if I put it to x hypothetically. If I give both of my electrons to x, then x will have both electrons, and that will give my x a complete negative charge. Then, of course, as a consequence, since my y lost its electron because it, it, it was given to x, my y has a lack of electrons which imparts with it a positive charge. Right? It makes sense. I have no more electrons, so there's nothing to balance my positive charge. My electrons are gone already. And we have names for this. The x here is mostly what we call a nucleophile. In symbols, we write this as the nu minus, usually. And this y with a positive charge is called the electrophile. Electrophile. Usually written in symbols as E+. Plus. Of course, you can assume that the negative of the nu here is related to the negative charge of the x here, as well as the charge of E+, plus, the symbol, related to the plus sign of y. But take note that we don't really need to have a complete negative charge or a complete positive charge to declare something a nucleophile or an electrophile. So just to make things clear, sometimes we call electrophiles, electrophiles as electron-poor regions and nucleophiles as electron-rich regions. Meaning, if I have a nucleophile, I don't really need to have a negative charge. I just need to have an electron-rich area. An example of that is, you know, benzene. Like, for example, if I ask you, do you see any negative charge in benzene? None, right? I mean, it's neutral. But the fact that there are so many pi bonds in it, meaning compared to single bonds, I have here a lot of double bonds, which is significantly greater in amount of electrons, I can call, ele uh, I can call benzene electron-rich making it a nucleophile even though it doesn't really have a negative charge. Or for example, let's say I have a carbonyl group and I want to focus on this carbon. Remember that oxygen is much more electronegative than carbon. It will pull, the oxygen will pull the, the electrons, making it partially negative. And as a result, our carbon here will become partial positive. And since my carbon here is partial positive, you can already say it's electron poor because that's the reason why it has a positive charge in the first place, right? So even though on paper it is written that CO does not really have a charge per se, it's only written like this in the paper, we still assume that this carbon is an electrophilic region just because we know by analysis that this one has a partial positive charge. So that has to be made clear. Now, another type of reaction that we deal with a lot in organic chemistry are redox reactions. Now, if you think about it, if you pause and, you know, recall how do we define redox before, it's the one wherein we count how many electrons are gained or lost. Usually, that's how we do it before. But we don't do any counting of electrons here anymore. I mean, you can, but we don't need to at this point because we have shortcuts. The symbol that we will use for oxidation is O with a bracket. I think that's self-explanatory. So there are three possible definitions for oxidation. It can be either, the simplest one is addition of O. Like literally, I see a compound after the reaction, I see an extra oxygen added. That is oxidation. Or oxidation can also mean increased bond order of oxygen. Bond order meaning if I have a single bonded oxygen and then the single bond becomes a double bond, that is an increase in the bond order. I can also consider that oxidation. Or another possible example or definition is the removal of a hydrogen atom. That also counts as oxidation. And so that means that if I have reduction, it is basically the opposite of all of the following statements in oxidation. We also use the symbol H with a bracket for reduction, and we will find out why very soon. So if reduction, mean, uh, if oxidation means add O, then the opposite of that, remove O. So reduction can be removal of or loss of oxygens. If oxidation means increase of bond order to oxygen, 
then that means we can decrease the bond order of oxygen for reduction. Like let's say I have a double bonded dough, then it becomes a single bonded dough. That is an example of reduction. And if oxidation is remove H, then reduction can be add H. Okay? And that is actually the reason, this is the exact reason why we use the symbol H for reduction. The fact that addition of H also counts as reduction. And I, I highly suggest that you be familiar with this and master this as we go along. Because there are cases that I, we will ask each other, is this oxidation? Is this reduction? And we will always go back to this table. Okay? Now, there are shortcuts for reactions. Like, remember, we have three main patterns, addition, elimination, and substitution. We have shortcuts for that. Usually, if I have an addition reaction... In order for me to combine two things completely, we often consume a double bond or a pi bond. Let's say I have a, a reaction between a ketone, this one, and water. Notice, after the reaction, I intentionally, as you see in this product, combined all the atoms from the ketone and the water. So they have all mixed up to become this single product. But you notice, in order to do this without violating basic rules like your carbon should only have four bonds and, and whatnot, the double bond of the ketone has been converted to a single bond in the product. And that is the meaning of this statement. We usually lose or consume a pi bond in addition reactions. Whereas the opposite happens for elimination, we usually, in fact, add a double bond or a pi bond. Observe. Let's say I have here an alcohol. I have an organic compound with OH. We call this an alcohol, right? And let's say after a certain reaction, the OH and this H here are removed to give us water. So, you know, we can call this or we can read this as, in this reaction, water has been, you know, eliminated from this compound. But, you know, if I remove something, there should be something to take the place of whatever was left behind. Like, my carbon has lost a bond to OH here. This carbon lost a bond to H here. And we need to make up for those bonds lost. And usually, in order to make up for it, the single bond is converted to a double bond, which is actually the opposite of addition. So addition, we add a pi bond. Elimination, we remove a pi bond. And I think it's supposed to make sense that they're opposite in patterns or shortcuts because technically speaking, addition and elimination are really opposites. Okay? So that's it for the basics of reactions. And next, we will deal with the reactions of alkanes, followed by the reactions of alkenes and alkynes.